Welcome back to the Airplane Factory. It is Sunday, um, January 1st, 2023. This is day 12, I think, uh, of working on the airplane. Um, and I've, I've been jumping around quite a bit um, because I'm waiting on parts for certain sections. So today I'm gonna move on to the right elevator construction. Uh, which is the elevators will be the, the last piece of um, the empanage section that I haven't touched yet. The, the construction of the empanage is very similar to the construction of the, the rudder where it's got these stiffeners that all need to be separated into individual parts and then trimmed down. Um, I separate them with these aviation tin snips, which works pretty well. And then the last batch I did for the rudder, I did the long uh, trims on the, uh, on the flanges with tin snips as well, and then cleaned them up on the uh, scotch Bright wheel. That worked really well. However, since the last time I did that, um, I spent a whole 10 bucks and got a metal cutting blade for my bandsaw. Um, researching this in the beginning with a bandsaw, which is not a very, very expensive tool, um, it said that the, the standard um, blade that comes with a bandsaw is fine for aluminum because it's thin and it's uh, soft material. But when working with thin material like this and trying to do precise cuts, it was nasty. So um, the difference between putting uh, a metal cutting blade on there and the, the, um, the blade that was on it is night and day. This it goes through it like butter. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the separating of the parts, dry out the lines for the, the flange trims, and then I'll experiment with one of them and see if that's a good tool to use for that. And if not, I'll go back to the tin snips because um, they work pretty well. The only thing that I didn't like about using with the tin snips um, is that you kind of have to switch back and forth between left and right um, and trying to stay outside of that line in such a narrow space can be a little bit tricky and you can get a little bit of uh, twist in the metal, but you know, nothing too bad. Anyways, that's where we're at. We'll see how far we get today. Okay, quick update. Um, separated all the parts. I just do, drew out the, um, the trim line on one to test it with the, the bandsaw. And uh, it's a really good result. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, very easy to control, about 10 times faster than doing it with two separate pairs of left hand and then uh, right hand tin snips. And this will be really easy to clean up and trim uh, or take it down to the line with the scotch Bright wheel, which is good because there are like 30 of these that have to be done. So I'll be busy for the next couple of hours for sure. Good morning-ish. Um, it's Tuesday, rather Monday, January 2nd, 2023. And uh, yesterday I was working on separating and uh, forming all of the stiffeners for the two elevators. I finished that and uh, it took about four hours, which actually was much less than I expected. There are 29 of them. But um, as I was mentioning previously, adding the, the metal cutting blade to the bandsaw, I can't even tell, it, it probably saved me three hours of work. Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, it was a lot. It was uh, significant. So those are all done, but um, the, the elevators um, are not mirror images of each other. Um, the left elevator has a trim tab on it, so the construction of that is slightly different. So what the plans say to do is to start with the right elevator before you make any mistakes on the left elevator because that's the one that tends to be tricky. Um, but just following the plans in sequence, uh, one of the things that it wants you to do in the beginning of this whole process is since you've got all these stiffeners done, um, why don't you go ahead and fit the stiffeners to the uh, skins for both elevators because um, there are a couple of holes that need to be match drilled out, then you can take them off and de deburr them. <clears throat> but that actually gets a little bit confusing because some of these stiffeners, once they're completed, they have to be cut down 
to be a different version of the same stiffener location on the left elevator versus the right. So uh, pardon the shakiness, I'm gonna go handheld for a second and show you what I'm talking about here. So big uh, bundle of completed, cleaned up, cut, whatever stiffeners. Um, I basically just got all the stiffeners for the right elevator on this side. Left elevator, there are a lot more, plus a bunch of these um, stiffeners, which I'll, I'll show you on the plans. These ones right here, you can see that they're pairs that are all of equal length, pairs of pairs, because there are two each, right? This stiffener, which we'll call F, needs to be cut down to create a stiffener L for the left elevator, um, which you'll see J, K, and L over here. And the same thing, two E stiffeners need to be cut down to create a K, two D stiffeners need to be cut down to create a J. Obviously, I haven't made the cuts, and the reason why, uh, these are the plans for the right elevator here and they describe the cuts that you need to make. So this is a trim detail view. This is the, what you already did. So you had these long pieces and you separated pieces here at these points, and then you use these notches as guides to trim here, make this trim, clean it all up, whatever, that's fine. The instruction says that to create these stiffeners, J, K, and L from D, E, and F, you would trim from this second to the last, aftmost, this is the rear, second to the last um, a rivet hole a specific distance forward. That's this space represented right here, X. So, for example, on the E or D stiffener, I would trim one and seven eighths of an inch to then create a 720J. That's fine, that makes sense. I, I can measure these and I can, I can trim these, that's fine. The confusion is, this is a 3 8 scale view of the right elevator. And so for example, this is the F stiffener here that needs to be trimmed two inches to make an L stiffener over here or here. So it's a flip-flop, it's the same position. It's the, the second to the last or second to most outboard stiffener on the other elevator. This is also 3-8 scale. Here's my confusion. This is 3-8 scale, if I measure this, and I measure this, also 3 eighths scale. On the drawing, they are identical. This isn't two inches shorter or 3 eighths of two inches shorter. Okay, before I go any further here, I just have to pop in and admit to you that uh, this is embarrassing to watch. Uh, looking back at it now, my error in interpreting the plans is pretty obvious. And to some of you probably jumped out right away. Um, I did, um, as you'll see following up, um, choose a strategy that helped me come upon the right answer. I thought about leaving this clip out simply for the fact of embarrassment, but I decided to leave it in because it is part of the building process. You do, especially as a new builder, uh, come upon brain lock from time to time. Um, I can happily say that this elevator and the other one are complete and they're all good. But anyways, let's continue. So here's the plan. I'm going to go ahead and get the skins out and start clicoing the stiffeners to the skins. And on the right elevator, I'll make match the holes I need. And then I'm hoping that on the left elevator, once I start to click with them in, I'll understand these are the two uh, skins here. I'm hoping that once I click the stiffeners in or try to click the stiffeners into the left elevator, I'll discover where that uh, or why that two inches needs to be taken away. So I'll keep you posted. I'll set up the GoPro and do a little um, Keystone Cops uh, time-lapse video.
a lot of scratching my head and a lot of putting things together and taking them apart again. So we'll see. I'll admit that uh, this video is a little bit longer than I typically like them to be. Apparently, the work that I did on Sunday, the first, I did a couple of little snippets uh, on the heads up camera, but I didn't actually record any GoPro video of that. It's boring stuff anyways, like most of this stuff is. Um, here you see me um, doing some prep on the skins for both the left and the right elevators. And uh, as I said before, this process of trimming the blue vinyl to leave a lot of it on is not fun and it's extremely slow. Um, this is sped up 50 times. If it was this fast, I wouldn't mind doing it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do any more of it. Um, but I'm basically doing this so that I can start fitting the stiffeners uh, to the skins and then uh, hopefully, and as we've already learned, we'll find out uh, what the situation is for making the cuts for the stiffeners that will go on the left elevator skin, which is the one that you see me working on right now. Uh, you also kind of notice that that left elevator skin um, on the, the furthest end away from you, there's a big cutaway there uh, because that's where the trim tab is going to go, but it also makes that thing really floppy. So uh, you'll see me in a few minutes put a yellow microfiber down there to keep it from scratching uh, against itself. And then later on, I'll use uh, scraps of two by four just to create some space in there. Uh, building the elevators, um, they talk about doing the right elevator prior to the left elevator because the trim tab assembly makes it more complex. And I'm not gonna say that I didn't have difficulty with uh, the trim tab construction, but um, I guess it wasn't as bad as I had built it up to be in my head. Here I'm getting the the sort of known stiffeners um, attached or uh, clicoed into the um, into the right elevator. Um, and then I'll be getting doing the same process into the left elevator, which is uh, where I will interrupt the video to explain what I learned about the way that these things fit. Um, as I record this today, it's uh, middle of April and I'm almost completely done with the empennage kit. Um, a few of the uh, backorder parts have uh, shown up and I can start working on that, but the last of them, uh, I think the bearing uh, that attaches the elevator uh, will not be here until the end of May, beginning of June. So, uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's cut away for a second and talk about what I learned about the uh, cutting of uh, the stiffeners. So I said that I was going to test fit everything onto the skins and then see if I can figure out why that, plus the help of um, some online resources and other people who've done this before. Here's what I learned as you go through it. When you start forming these, there are three of these um, stiffeners that don't have the final hole right here. This ends up being match drilled with the skin once it's installed on there. So this second to the last hole is this hole right here when you first start putting these together or, or start forming these stiffeners, it's the last hole at that point. So what ends up happening is that when you, um, when you measure it from this hole, the last hole before this is made, or ultimately the second to the last hole, the cut is really small. I'm 16th of an inch or less. And the reason is on the left elevator, the hole pattern is just slightly different. Um, and so that last hole will not measure uh, up. It won't match the same one, but also because the hole pattern is slightly different than the left elevator, this end, the sort of skinny end that goes into the, the, the trailing edge bend in here, ends up going a little bit too deep into the crease. And so just a little bit needs to be turned away so there's adequate clearance so that the, the trailing edge bend can be adequate. Anyways, that's what I figured out. Um, it's all done. They're all cut. Now today I have to uh, just clean them up, scuff them, prime them, and uh, get ready to rivet the stiffeners onto the skins. Stay tuned. 
So there you have it, uh, really tiny cuts. And um, when I was looking at where to uh, make the cut, I was just thinking about the wrong point of reference um, to measure it from. Um, they all came together well. Uh, you see me fitting the rest of them on here, uh, using a couple of scraps of 2i4 to keep the ends from flopping in on each other while I do that. Um, and then uh, shortly after this, uh, we do the uh, match drilling. The uh, If I didn't explain it before, um, this kit is pre-punched, meaning all the holes, all mostly all the holes are where they need to be with respect to like the ribs and the skins and, and whatnot. Um, but even where they are pre-punched, they are not final sized. Um, they are just ever so slightly undersized. So you still need to go through and final size drill them. Um, I don't even use a, a, a fluted drill bit, but rather a reamer, um, which gives a cleaner hold because it's just, it's barely, um, just barely undersized. And the reason that that is, is because, um, Vans wants to leave you with a significant amount of work to do because it's your responsibility to build at least 51% of the airplane to uh, qualify as a builder in the experimental category. So that's why you see me busting out that yellow air drill a lot. Um, these will all get put away. And uh, once I've fitted and, and uh, match drilled everything in the left elevator, I'll turn in for the night and resume work on the right elevator. Thanks for watching.